Hello. Today's video is going to be knurling on a manual lathe. And so some important things that have to happen on the manual lathe in order to set up for knurling is you need a lower RPM and a high feed. So first order of business, I'm going to look at my chart. And 115B1, so put it in B1, is my recommended RPM. And then I'm going to look at my chart. Now we're going longitudinally, so long ways. So I'm going to pick off of this chart and I'm going to pick at least 17 thousandths per rep, 0 0.017, so that's G4. I have gone faster, but 17 is good, no less than that, because otherwise the neural overlaps, okay? So we're in G4, so now we're going to get to move up top to the machine. And take a look at things here. So, what we're going to do is use a scissors type. So it's scissors and it closes down on top of the part like this in order to do it. It's less pressure, uh, less tool pressure than the other style. We have another style, it's like a bump. It has two rollers and it comes and it pushes from the side and it tries to push away um, the part. And even when I have a center in there, it still causes side pressure and some issues, and this one works a lot better. So I'm going to put this in, lock it down. So we need a tailstock. Set our tailstock up, lock it down, adjust it so that we have pressure. My chuck is tight. So another important thing is we have feed direction over here, this lever. I want to make sure I'm going towards the chuck. If by chance I don't get it all cleaned up in one pass, it's really important never disengage. Never disengage my feed, okay, until I'm 100% satisfied. If I have to make another pass because it's not deep enough and I've disengaged the feed, you're done. You'll not match the pattern. So it's all about keeping it engaged until. So we'll come down, we'll stop the spindle where we want to, we'll inspect it. Once we inspect it, if we're not satisfied, we'll change the direction over here to reverse. We'll turn the spindle back on and it'll come back the other way. And we stop. So we want to start with the rollers like half on and half off, okay? But we first want to get it engaged, okay? So, close this, I'm going to turn my spindle on. Make sure I've got enough pressure, I do. Now I'm going to engage my feed rate. Now my feed rate is gone and I'm moving. So now I can come in close just to look. I'm past the edge of my part. So I'm going to have to stop, reverse my direction, so that I can see that I'm half on, half off the wheel. That looks good. Change the direction back or else I'm not going to be happy. Okay. So now I need to make sure the scissors are opened up wider than the part. So I'm going to loosen this up here. Back this up a little bit so you can see me do the adjusting here. So I'm wider and this pivots. Now my height is already set up and down so this is pretty much on the center. So I'm going to go in. Now this needs to be on the center in and out. So I got an eyeball on this pin and the pin on the bottom help to line up where center is. You can squeeze it down and look, move in until I see center. And I can look at the wheels and sight it down my shaft. That looks about good. So now I'm going to finger tighten this all the way until it's finger tight. 
Once it's finger tight, my first pass is a half a turn more. So I'm tightening it a half a turn. That thing was in the way. There's a half a turn. So now I should be all set. Feed's engaged, going the right way, centered. Now the other order of business here is I'm going to use some coolant in this little thing so I can squirt it on it, okay, just to flush the chips out. Don't get this thing sucked in there and chewed up, okay. So I'm going to stand on this side so I can see, turn the spindle on, now it's going to go. So I'm going to shoot, I don't have to constantly do it, it's just to wash away any chips that might be built up because those things will get pressed back in. Because remember, knurling is not cutting, it's just moving or repositioning the um, material based on the shape of the wheel. So I'm going down here, looks like a decent pattern so far. Keep flushing. And the new lace that we have is where we really want to do this because they have coolant and we can get the coolant constantly flushing and it recirculates. All right, that looks pretty good. I think this is the end of my travel. I'm going to stop. So now I can take a look at my pattern. What I'm looking for is a diamond shaped pattern. Let's get a better look. Okay. Diamond shaped pattern. I want to see a ridge and diamonds. This looks pretty good. So I'm going to say this is done. It's easier to do aluminum. Aluminum, most of the time, you can get away with one pass with that half turn pressure after finger tight. Uh, steel, you usually need a second pass, unless you're heavy on your half turn. But I don't recommend it because too much pressure at once is a problem. So I'm good. Do not disengage yet. Move this off. Release this. Okay. So I'm going to loosen this up. Crank it up a ways. Now it's kind of hard. It might, sometimes they get sticky and they don't want to release. Make sure you're out far enough so when you crank out on the cross slide, you don't drag across your surface. So here we come. Get my tail stock out. I'm going to change my RPM so I can get this around. I'm going to take my part out of the spindle. And here's my part. So I can see it looks pretty nice. See the nice diamond pattern? Um, nice and even all the way around. Sometimes you might get it's a little less at this end if you have a longer thing that you're doing. And then you might have to make like a zero pass or a little tiny bit more pressure to come back the other way. But this is really good. So this knurling is done. And I would say uh, mission accomplished. So see you next time.